she was doing her household work suddenly her family heard vegetables falling from the kitchen they rushed to find uh, she was on the lying on the floor had a prolong of eyes posturing of upper and lower, uh, lower limbs clenching of the teeth with dulling of saliva following which she had altered sensorium there is no history of uh, fever past seizure episodes substance abuse or focal deficits on examination she was drowsy uh, pulse rate was 102 beats per minute uh, blood pressure was 140 by 80 respiratory rate 19 breaths per minute saturation 98% on room air she was if surprised uh, she uh, she was pale uh, no cyanosis clubbing chest lymphopathy or pili edema Uh, CNS examination, uh, GCS was 10 by 15. Other examination was fine. Uh, uh, other systemic examination was normal. So the differentials uh, considered. Uh, so the differentials considered. Uh, the syndrome complex is a generalized tonic seizure with impaired awareness. So most probable uh, metabolic causes. First, uh, dyslexia, hypoglycemia, hepatic or uremic encephalopathy. Vascular causes: PCA stroke, uh, CVT. autoimmune causes sle cns vasculitis acute encephalitis uh, hsv uh, influenza uh, unknown substance use or withdrawal state uh, epilepsy disorder or space occupying lesion in the uh, brain so investigation wise uh, she was anemic normocytic normochromic anemia with thrombocytopenia and uh, uh, corrected retics was uh, 2.7 uh, peripheral smear showed uh, schistocytes of 6.2% uh, her uh, other metabolic parameters were normal lft was uh, lft was also fairly normal uh, ldh was elevated her other coagulation parameters were normal uh, inflammatory markers was also normal uh, ana cyanka pianka uh, were all, was also normal uh, blood cultures urine culture showed no growth uh, serologies for scrub dengue was negative so this is a syndrome complex of a neurological uh, involvement acute symptomatic seizure with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with thrombocytopenia and mild acute kidney injury so the possible uh, is the possibility ttp with plasmic score of 7 on further investigation uh, we we ruled out other causes of acquired uh, ct neck thorax abdomen showed no evidence of any malignancy there was a uh, few hypodense lesions but ultrasound showed out to be uh, le it less evident uh, mri brain had uh, acute infarction left cerebellar hemisphere uh, adam ts levels uh, was less than 0.2% with inhibitors of more than 2 inhibitor units uh, anti factor h antibody uh, 5.2 uh, all the inflammatory markers were negative suggestive of an uh, primary immune uh, ttp immune mediated ttp so i'll be talking about uh, ttp so it's an acute episode which is defined by clinical criteria which is multi visceral uh, ischemic symptoms biological criteria which is um, uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and the presence of severe deficiency of adam ts13 so uh, the clinical manifestation the most common is the uh, maha with thrombocytopenia the neurological abnormality is the most common followed by fever uh, renal is very rare and uh, pentat is uh, uh, almost 7% only uh, the most common as you can see in the uh, pie chart is a uh, primary immune mediated acquired is uh, comes next so these are the registries comparing uh, the different factors so most of the thing had a uh, less than 10% of adam ts and uh, most of them were primary immune mediated and so coming to pathophysiology uh, so it's basically because of the ultra large von willebrand factor multimer so the uh, because of any shearing force first the a3 uh, uh, contacts with the subendothelium then the a1 uh, following which uh, uh, in between the uh, the uh, the dimer uh, the dimer there is an a2 which is cleaved by the adam ts so if there is adam ts deficiency there is this large uh, uh, multimer in which uh, there is increased uh, platelet activation and adhesion which can uh, which can uh, increase the uh, thrombotic events so approach to diagnosis of tma uh, uh, ttp so patient with tma uh, first uh, we need to rule out other causes uh, apart from uh, other acquired causes like dic preeclampsia malignant hypertension if not uh, we'll calculate the plasmic score so if pl plasmic score is 0 to 4 it's a low risk and we should consider alternative diagnosis if it is high risk we should immediately start therapeutic plasma exchange and we should send for adam ts levels we should not wait for the adam ts levels to come once it comes if ttp is confirmed if it is uh, if it is more than 30% ttp is unlikely and we'll look for other alternative diagnosis so there are different scores uh, of which the plasmic score is most commonly used uh, so in our patient the plasmic score was 7
So the treatment of uh, TTP includes uh, the first and foremost therapeutic plasma exchange. Steroids, however, has very low efficacy, uh, followed by rituximab. Uh, so the thing is, uh, uh, FFPs are used uh, so that they have ADMTS, uh, ADMTS uh, proteins. So there will be uh, already if the plasma is deficient of ADMTS, we can uh, uh, replace those. Uh, however, uh, plasma exchange or uh, uh, with SD plasma, SD plasma can be used or solvent detergent plasma is preferred. Uh, until when uh, do you give plasma pheresis? Uh, uh, plex. So one is uh, until organ involvement has resolved, uh, platelet count normalized for two consecutive days and uh, LDH is normalized. We don't wait for the schistocytes to disappear. Uh, however, there is no uh, uh, evidence for steroid. It is uh, Their role is only in autoimmune uh, TTP. And rituximab is used uh, in case where there is a relapse of uh, TTP in spite of giving uh, steroids and uh, plasma, uh, uh, therapeutic plasma transfer. So frontline therapy is uh, uh, therapeutic plasma uh, followed by uh, steroids. And we continue, we follow it up with tapering dose of steroids. Um, and rituximab is used only when there is a relapse or there is failure of treatment. Other newer drugs use uh, bortezomib, um, and uh, Kaplasizumab. So this is a study in which uh, they have found uh, preemptive rituximab use actually uh, reduces the incidence of uh, acute TTP. So this study took 48 patients of which uh, 30 patients received preemptive rituximab. So on follow-up uh, of a TTP patient, we always order, uh, we should always uh, follow up with CBC and ADMTS levels. So if uh, ADMTS levels uh, are low, however the counts are normal and patient is clinically stable, uh, we should uh, we should consider giving rituximab. So it has been found uh, on preemptive uh, therapy of rituximab, there is a decreased uh, incidence of uh, relapse from 0 0.57 per, uh, episodes per year to zero episodes per year. So here we can see there is a improvement in CD4 counts and uh, improvement in ADMTS levels. And there is improved survival with preemptive rituximab. Even though patient is clinically uh, stable, we should always look for ADMTS levels uh, to uh, consider rituximab. Therapy. So in our patient, our patient received eight cycles of uh, TP, uh, and she continued to have uh, severe thrombocytopenia despite TP. So we gave a uh, uh, high dose uh, steroids for which there was a good response. Following which her sensory improved, her schistocytes were in decreasing trend. Patient is doing well and is in uh, follow up in OPD. So learning points about any neurological complications uh, with uh, thromb thrombocytopenia, TTP should be the first thing we should uh, think about and a uh, plasmic score of for TTP. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the audience? Nine thousand. So in between we were giving FFPs till the ADMTS levels came. And TP also we started immediately. So, and with the stroke in the MRI, you consider TTP. Yeah. Because we don't have any issue. Yeah. Peripheral smear also that time showed schistocytes, 6.2%. Uh, so, what you do is that I need a problem that you can have immunized is happening with the schistocytes. Now, this plasma score, what's the use of plasma score? So, we can uh, to make sure, like, uh, uh, to approach for the treatment if it is low plasma score. So, low possibility if there is high plasmic score we should immediately start a uh, plasma exchange yes, should not how sure you can be to offer a plasma exchange to this patient because generally this adamantium certain level takes long time to come back generally, yes what i remember three days at least isn't it so it basically tells you because earlier you start the treatment i guess Early, it's better yes, and when you stop plasma exchange you set some criteria but generally yeah. when do we start uh so once the there is a platelet count is improved within yeah, two days, consecutive days. Adam TS levels also we can come as one of the indicators to stop next. I'm not sure. What I'm aware is platelet count uh, sustained increase of platelets. Okay. Mm. You told me about plas plasma score. No? What are the components of it? So platelet counts, uh, creatine, INR, MCV, presence of hemolysis. Absence of active cancer or prior, no prior stem cell or organ transplant. That's because your cancer also can cause a uh, uh, thrombotic state. Uh, Certain drugs can cause uh, it. Yes. Uh, uh, mitomycin. Mitomycin also is one of the yes. only things that we used to see very common. Autoimmune is not the first thing that you think of. 
No, she come and talk to me. You know. Uh, she got talk to me. She got talk to me. That's yes. Yeah, any actually gram rate is such as per se can tend to cause a TTP. So here all the infections were ruled out before you yes. offer plasma exchange. Yeah, we had also said anti H antibodies, which was negative, which was specific for a uh, HUS. And uh, and uh, certain drug associated TTP even plasma exchange don't need need not be offered. Yes. So. There's certain uh, mitomycin and, yeah, and like chemotherapeutic. Just stop the drug and you not offer the plasma gene automatically. The plate just goes through. If you actually see the component, so there's one particular thing which doesn't come into that. Can you make out uh, the hemolysis criteria? Critics and uh, cells actually doesn't come yes. in your uh, plasma score. Yes, because that is one of the reasons why you are doing the plasma score. So apart from tissue cells, most of the criteria is for hemolysis is there. Anything else? Will you give rituximab in our Indian scenario generally? Oh, generally, do we give like usually steroid pulses for pulse. the plasma exchange? And one indication is a relapse. If we give, so we can call out the patient. patient. Preemptive rituximab yeah. because the risk of in our country, especially with the TB ongoing and all, I think it will be, we'll be a little more cautious to give rituximab. But uh, in medicine, how are we giving? Huh? Relapse only, no? Yeah. Good to know that there is other drugs that you can give along with the plasma exchange. Okay, shall we proceed? Patient got oral steroids. Yes, on oral steroids. So following up, we'll follow up with uh, every two weeks. We'll follow up. Uh, After two weeks, you plan to pulsing with three days. With temperate and then one inch per kg of per kg. Yes. Shall we go on to the second presentation by Nelson Three? We need to be presenting. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. 